Hey, it is Elch from Simple Lines Anatomy, and in this one we're going to be talking about why the back goes out for seemingly no reason whatsoever. And so that's when we get back pain quite extreme from seemingly as like a simple motion uh, as something we do all the time or something that is incredibly low weight and all of a sudden the back is in horrible pain. Uh, now there is a reason, of course, we're going to give you one kind of two reasons for this to happen. It's not all of them, but this is one potential. So this is something manual therapists know quite well, whether you're chiro, physio, osteopathy, athletic therapy, massage therapy. But this is also something that should be in simple enough terms that the average patient can understand it so that when you're going through this, you can understand why it happens and what to do about it as well. So let's let's start with our, our easy example something we all do so lifting in this case potatoes apparently because that's what we came up with lifting is a normal action and let's just assume it's a relatively low weight let's assume this potato bag is like five to ten pounds and it's not a big deal but it is still a weight and it's still something we have to consider because it will be pulling down on the body here there will be a line of force basically going like so and this is important because it establishes that we are working against this weight. Now, the thing about this lifting action is it's not just with the arm. It requires the whole action of the body attempting to do basically this in summary, lifting up. And that's through the thorax, through the low back, and through the hips as well. All of these things are important. It's a full body action and not just one particular joint, which is a key element of all this. So in any case, at one point or another, you may find in your life, especially if you're over the age of 30, that there's a spot, especially in the low back, I would say, especially in the low back, that suddenly goes out on you. And this can be completely without warning. And the fact is, the warnings are there, you just may not recognize them because you don't have the skill or the training or the understanding of how the body works. So we're going to try and give you that. So. What you have to understand is there's a problem building more often than not, or there's a problem underlying that you're just completely unaware of. This is a very important element. There's something happening slowly with your body, to your body, inside your body, that you are just completely unaware of, and it's about to get set up. So this is a very simplified set of vertebrae. So there's two vertebrae here. They don't look exactly like this, but this is good enough just to simplify the attachment points for us. So what you'll notice, and this is a generalization of most joints, you have an area in the center, let's say, hang on a sec there, you have an area in the center that comprises the very mobile part of the joint. In this case, we actually have a gelatinous center. And what this means is that it's a, a great pivot point. If you want to do lots of moving around, if you want to go left, right, forwards, backwards, anything like that, the vertebrae do this quite well at this point. There's more joints than this, but we're just going to summarize it as that. So great movement center. And then surrounding that, as we move sort of away from the center point, you'll notice you have fibrous elements, and that's starting to hold and bind it together and contain this more fluidy part in the middle. Now, just outside of that, we've also got these ligaments, and ligaments have a, an important support function. They're a little more external to the joint, but they prevent the joint from going so far that it's damaging to that joint. There would, of course, be joint ligaments here and like all around. They'd be all over the place, but we're just going to keep it easy and just understand that it's more external when we look at a ligament. They want to keep that joint together in the right place. Now, muscles the red ones here, um, they surround. They're even more external than that, typically. And you'll find as we, we expand on this image, um, they have an important support function as well, but they also create movement. So just to compare, we're gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna go to the leg, because a leg, believe it or not, even though it's a very different set of joints, has a similar configuration. Now, in this case, it's what we call a synovial joint, a fluid space in the middle that makes it even more mobile, a great deal of mobility here, but it's still a fluid, highly mobile space in the center. And then on the external portion of that, we have our ligaments again. So for the techies in the room, it is MCL and LCL. Of course, we've got the ACL and PCL in the middle, but in the same way, 
they support the knee and prevent it from going too far out. So if the knee gets struck that way or that way, it's, it's going to reinforce against that. And it's very important that it does that, otherwise we'd be constantly dislocating our joints. As well, just like before, we have muscles that are more external. So let's say this is a big thigh muscle that's a rectus femoris right there. We also have gastrocnemius muscles. They're more on the back, and for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw them as if they were in the front. And then of course, we have hamstrings roughly in that orientation. And then we even have a few more uh, muscles that we call the vastus muscles. And just to simplify, something give or take like that. So you can see this kind of complex threading of muscles here. And they, they have an important function, of course, of movement, but in the same way, similar to ligaments, they keep the whole thing together. They keep it in relative planes. And if you go outside of those planes, it can be very, very bad. The joint can get essentially destroyed. So let's just add a little bit more complexity here. So we've got a basic joint. And what you have to understand is all joints are part of a more complex system. They all work together. So if we go back to our leg, you can see that these joints so whether it's the knee versus the ankle or the ankle versus the hip and knee, all of them do work together because there's multiple layers of muscles crossing. Well, the spine is an even more really amazing example of that because the spine has very complex sets of muscles. And so they do something like this. I'm just going to summarize. I'm just going to make it nice and clean and just real simple. So you'll have muscles that kind of go like this. You'll have muscles that go through the middle parts and they're called, you know, spinales and long, long isthmus and these complex names. And they're nothing you have to worry about for just for this example. But they go all the way up and all the way down and they connect these things together. And so it makes it a functional unit, you could say. That's just one way of explaining it. But it means it just works together. Now, with that, with that functionality, there are some things that it allows for. Basically, it has a real great allowance for twisting and turning, and honestly getting stuck there, even though we retain normal motion. So let's say we take this joint that we that we drew out, and we're just gonna put like a big spin through it. Say it's like spun like that, it goes bam, big old spin, and maybe it even bends to the side at the same time. Not to get too complex, but say it's really, really spun, side bend, all that. So the thing is, the ligaments are often on that side of rotation or that side bending, they can be very, very stretched out. Now it can be both sides, it could be one and the other, but let's just assume it's kind of just one side for, for examples. Um, and so you'll find that as we change the motion, as it rotates away from something, as it rotates into the turn, because the it can be going this way over here, but it can be going essentially the opposite way above it. But basically we get some ligamentous pull. It's not necessarily damaging it yet, but it's already on the verge of something that could really, really hurt. Remember that the ligaments and the muscles, they both have support functions. And it would make sense that if you went too far and you started tearing fibers, basically tearing those muscles and tearing the ligaments, that you should feel some pain. And in fact, ligaments are intensely painful. They have so many pain-sensitive fibers. So it's very important that they actually do this. It's not a bad thing that they do this if it serves a protective function. So anyways, we've got this twist built into the system. It is on the verge of pulling the ligament too hard, but it hasn't been exposed. Because the funny thing is, above and below, so this chunk here and potentially this chunk here, can be very mobile still. The fact that this exists will change its mobility. That's a fact. That's how the body works but it can be still very mobile above and below. And unless you are really moving your spine in this case, or you're really moving your, your body around, you won't really notice this deficit for quite a long time, sometimes. So here's the thing, let's go back to our example. So as we start to move, let's say this big old potato bag, uh, we're lifting it, and it just so happens that this one time, normally the mobility through here, through the thorax, the lumbar spine, pelvis, and legs, normally it's able to compensate for this really twisted up spot, this spot right here. Again, we're going to say it's twisted, whoosh, big old twist like that. And then the vertebrae within that, that's way too big, but just assume that's a vertebrae, as way too big, is 
on a lengthened position through that ligament and through that muscular area. So it's on the verge. Now it just so happens the action you want to do this one time, and it could be years later, or it could be, you know, days of this, but this one time you lift it in just the right way and you do just a little bit of a twist, you know, you throw it behind you, uh, basically a, a snow shoveling action or a, or a gardening action where you're, you're throwing dirt behind you, um, where it just happens to isolate down to this one particular area and twist in the exact perfect, perfectly wrong direction to really start to strain this tissue right here. Just enough, it just so happens to be this one time, even though normally you're fine, this one time, it strains this segment really, really hard because now the problem is fully built into the system. Now we're always on the verge of hurting it and all of a sudden you triggered that. Before it was able to compensate, but this one particular day, it just goes off because it doesn't have the ability to prevent the strain. So this potato sack that you maybe have lifted a thousand times or weighs very little is seemingly insignificant but it just so happens this one particular angle, the, just the wrong, perfectly wrong thing, starts to strain the tissue and suddenly your back goes into a very large protective spasm. That's a key element. So these muscles start to contract. They start to go basically like this. They lock the area down to stop you from doing something, which is smart. It's an intelligent thing to do. It wants you to prevent you from hurting yourself further, but it's very, very true that it also, prevents motion and prevents you from doing the things you want to do. And that's good in a way, but bad after a while, if it doesn't get fixed. And now here's the thing, the leg, the vertebrae example is great because it's a complex system, but the leg is, is no different. Let's just say, you know, we have a big twist through this lower part of the leg, what we call the tibia or the true leg. You can have it so that the knee is reduced in motion, and you can have it so those ligaments on the knee are on quite a bit of strain right there. It's, it's like on the verge of getting pulled apart. It's on the verge of, of sending off a bunch of pain signals because it's trying to tell you that something's wrong. But it can still be new, moving relatively normal because we have hip joints, let's say, that are still very mobile. We have an ankle joint that is doing its job, and we have a foot that's also highly mobile still. So because these things are really good at moving still, they can compensate for the lack of motion in that knee. But all of, all of a sudden, because that's stuck out and you want to do a big twist in with the femur, let's say you do a big pivot, you're doing a turn, you know, you're playing football or something, you do a big twist and suddenly because that knee's not working, because it's on the verge of strain, it pulls so hard on those ligaments and suddenly we get a giant flare of pain, uh, something like that. And it gets to be that all of the muscles go into a big spasm, again, as a defense mechanism. And you didn't know it was there. Maybe you've got a few twinges, a few warnings, but you didn't know it was there until it was fully exposed. It just happened to be the wrong movement at the wrong time. So we have to ask, where did this come from? Because that is important. We should, we should really know. And there's two easy answers. You know, there, there can be more than this, but there's two simple answers. And in that it could be a single event or slowly over time. When we're talking about a single event, we don't necessarily mean like you were hit with a hammer. Um, that would be a very obvious reason. This is about why it goes for seemingly no reason. So it could be that you played a game of football. You get taken out, you get tripped, or you get tackled or something like that, depending on whose definition of football we're talking about. But it could be that you build in these problems, you get struck and you build in these problems and oftentimes you don't know about it because of the fact that you're excited, your blood is flowing, you've got a lot of adrenaline going on and maybe during the game, maybe during the physical activity, this strain starts to be put in, basically it gets pushed so far to the side or rotated and it's there and it's not until you cool off and you lose some of the extra pliability of movement. And all of a sudden you go to do something simple like lift a piece of paper off the ground. Can't tell you how many times we've heard this one. You go to just lift a piece of paper off the ground, throw it in the trash, and suddenly your back goes into a full spasm. It was never the trash. It was what you did leading up to it. Slowly over time, of course, that's kind of a, that's a understandable one. We all kind of know that one. It's 
the way you have your computer set up, let's say it's a repetitive action you do all the time. You know, my neck hurts because I hold my phone on the one side all the time while I'm trying to type something to that. Or I'm always twisting. I do a manual labor job and I'm always twisting and turning and, and throwing things. That's a very easy way to slowly build up these problems over time. Very easy way because it builds gradually and you actually get used to it. In either case, again, you can be completely unaware of this happening and it's not until you do that perfectly right or perfectly wrong depending on how you're looking at it movement that takes that stretched position that lengthened position to a over lengthened strained and painful position so then we have to ask of course what do we do about it and in summary we prevent it we mobilize it if it's already there and we repair it the prevention is of course so essential. That is how you live your life. That is how you move your body. Because the thing is, if you can get rid of these stuck spots, these, these spots that are favoring a certain strain pattern, if you can get rid of them in advance, they may never become exposed. And that can be through your exercise and stress management. That can be seeing a manual therapist. Whatever you need to do to keep your body healthy to prevent this. The other part, of course, is to start to mobilize that tissue. And with mobility, again, that can be exercise-based, but it might also require the help of a, a manual therapist. And this can be like massage therapy, physiotherapy is great, chiropractic, osteopathy, athletic therapy. These are all great ways of mobilizing this. When you have another person able to view how your body is working and pick out these problems, it works quite a bit better because doing it yourself, you're not, again, you're not always aware of these problems building up. That's natural to the body, unfortunately. So you need the help of another person. Lastly, we want to repair. And that is a complex subject, but just to keep it really gentle, to repair these things properly, if you mobilize, get rid of them, if you prevent anything else from building up, the repair process takes time and it takes normal movement. This is true, full of scar tissue. You have to get rid of it as much as you possibly can, and then you've got to reintroduce normal movement. That helps to reorient the body and get back to normal working order. Again, we were Simple Lines Anatomy, and if you like that, well, I like you too. Maybe we should hang out sometime. <laughs>